Uh, speaking of hearts. Yes. Yeah, we have to talk about one of probably the greatest stories. People always ask me, you know, as an actor, they're like, oh, what was your favorite story ever? And one of my favorite stories was the BJ story when you had to give her heart to Maxie. Yeah. Um, it was, Brad, it was so, I mean, it still gives me goosebumps today to talk about it. And I know listeners and viewers everywhere, it made such a huge impact on people your performance and Jackie's performance during that story that, you know, it was, it was one of the best stories ever told on general hospital, you know? And I, I just, I wanted to kind of get your take on it and, and, you know, going through it and, and how, how tough was it? And go ahead. Well, this is where, and I teach acting now, which is a different thing, but um, it tied back into my real life because my brother died at 13. Yeah. I understood what people, I understood being an observer of people during the loss of a child. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't know this at the time. This has come from many years of thinking about where did something come from? Sure. But the thing about listening to her heart came from my brother's heart surgery mm. and reliving some of that stuff. So it's a little bit of a method acting thing that you don't know about. You sure. just draw from your experiences. Um, but the interesting thing about sh uh, shooting it that day was we were running late. It was the end of the shooting day. They had already shot the show they wanted for General Hospital. And they said, do you guys mind just like that big monologue I had where I said goodbye to her? They said, there's not any movement in it. Do you mind if we just go ahead and shoot your rehearsal? Mm. And you're just on that stool and I was like I yeah I guess so so we shot that and then they had me go in there and and they said just just look at your daughter and say goodbye to her and and we shot that in rehearsal everything was just like it was an afterthought they didn't know it was going to be big I didn't know it was going to be big but Steve you know that you've lifted up on that wave before when you have nothing to do with it, just the world just goes. <sighs> yeah. But I mean, cause it, it affects me now. That's what I always liked about you. You're a softie. For all of your jokes, you're just a big old softy, and I've always appreciated that. Thanks. Man. <clears throat> so, yeah, because that day, because I was there that day when you shot it. Were you? Yeah. <sighs> what yeah. were you, about 12? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, that was, what, what year was that? That was 1994. Four? It was 94. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, I came in 91. Yeah. And I just remember that that story had such, I don't know, just such an impact watching you do that. But you know, that was, that was based on, without my knowledge, it was based on uh, death being moved out of my house, years and years of alienation and loneliness and it all came together in some kind of accidental storyline yeah some things are yeah. bigger than you are um and i find that in my life even today sure things like just like being on this show things happen there's just reasons behind it we don't understand but there's a great divine plan yeah i i agree man but isn't isn't it amazing that 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 work that you did like given the circumstances you were like can you just tape rehearsal like and and yet and and yet had it gone any way different it would have maybe been it different worked. it wouldn't have worked isn't that nuts yeah you know it's almost like uh, to me it's like they threw a pass and i accidentally caught it and was like well, what do i do with this? you know <laughs> sure. the, the story was for frisco and felicia and jackie it wasn't for tony you yeah. know tony just pours coffee and 
catches people up with the events. But yeah, sorry, I caught the pass. You caught it, buddy. Well lightning, done, man. lightning in a bottle, right there. Yeah. I mean, not not many people on the show or actors even get a chance like that. Those things don't culminate often like that. No. You know, and that was incredible. So. And it's also about you know films are about shadows and light. And people make fun of soap operas and stuff, but the reality is it was an image, an image of a child in a bed and a person leaning over to listen to their own heart in a new body. Yeah. And that's light and shadow. That's an image. It's not a word. It's not a bunch of acting. And that's what we really look for. Um, the other thing that I tell my acting students, which is the, I tell them, Every single day on a set for you, you have to believe that it is the best work you've ever done. Hmm. And, and they, and I said, if you make fun of your job, you probably shouldn't have that job. And if you live like that, then, then you're, you're, you make soap operas or whatever your medium into brilliant things that move people. But if you dismiss it, you, what you're doing is dismissing your power and your abilities. Absolutely. So, kudos to you guys. Well, well I, no, I, it's, it's amazing. I, I, I'm, uh, I'm so uh, envious of your students to be, able to, to be able to learn, Brad, that stuff from you now. I mean, that's just, it, it's such an incredible, it's just, it, you can't put value on that. You know, you've lived it. And, and to be able to just give that to your students is so incredible. It's just, it, it really is. 